Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. Last week, we launched the Dao Yi website, Facebook page, and uh, YouTube channel. We have already released two interviews with uh, Dr. Kenneth Fish and uh, Mr. Tim Cartmill, as well as an article written by Mr. Jonathan Bluston on the Dao Yi blog. All the Dao Yi links are in the description. Today, is our monthly Q&A. A lot of uh, interesting questions will be answered today. But first, let's warm up with Dao De Jing commentary and uh, Xiu Dao. Today's topic is Da Dao Fei, Yu Ren Yi, the first two sentences from uh, chapter 18, a very short chapter with only 8 sentences. Following the last chapters, categorization of uh, different solutions and attitude that a government could adopt in governing the ancient society. Lao Zi continued discussion of the four consequences if the Great Tao was not followed. Lao Zi said, quote, Da Dao Fei Yu Ren Yi, Zhi Hui Chu Yu Da Wei, Liu Qing Bu He Yu Xiao Ci, End quote. Translation Great Dao lost. There came the duty to man and right conduct. Wisdom and shrewdness appearing, there came great hypocrisy. The six relationships in harmonies, there came filial piety deep deep in the heart. Kingdoms, families, and uh, clans at war, there came loyal ministers. End translation. This very short chapter reflects Lao Tzu's concept of uh, unity of uh, opposite. According to Lao Tzu, the law of the unity of uh, opposites is the fundamental law of the universe. Again, he indirectly emphasized the importance of uh, Wu Wei or non action. A society does not have to promote righteousness. His belief may sound outdated today, but it can still be used at the individual level in modern society. So, the first two sentences. Da Dao Fei Yu Ren Yi, O Great Dao Lost, there came the duty to man and right conduct. Tell us the importance of uh, identifying the loss of Dao as the root cause of the promotion of Ren Yi, O Duty to Man and Right Conduct. In Xiu Dao practice, the first two sentences have a specific meaning in guiding the development of overall Xiu Dao principles. In Taoist practice, we always emphasize the concept of prenatal energy or Xian Tian Qi, the energy that came with that at the birth. Xian Tian Qi can only be consumed with time but only be replenished through practice. Postnatal energy can be converted to prenatal energy under certain conditions, such as Xuan Guan Qiao Kai O, the opening of the mystery gate. I have dedicated videos introducing the terms prenatal, postnatal, and mystery gate. Check out my shootout playlist, link is in the description. So in Taoist energy practice, Da Dao is the prenatal energy. Da Dao Fei means that when people forget to focus on refining the prenatal energy but instead only pursue the development of postnatal energy, Ren Yi, commonly translated into practice of Yin and Yang energy because of a focused topic. Philosophically, Dao De Jing promotes the non-action or Wu Wei approach. 
will shield our practice utilizes the static approach. A static approach makes the energy rise by itself without any mental intervention. It's the method to follow the Great Tao instead of focusing on different types of energy experiences or you ren yi, which was criticized by Lao Zi in this chapter. To summarize, this chapter, especially the first two sentences, has been used in Taoist practice to emphasize the importance of prenatal energy and the static approach in the energy refinement process. This is one of the fundamental principles of Tao's energy refinement practice, the meaning of Xiu Dao or Tao cultivation. By the way, I will explain the Xiu Dao concept in next week's video. With that, let's get on with our Q&A. Questions answered in today's video include First, Federico Pogalia, Xiu Dao Embryo Indicators. Next, from Frederic Gaudin, Xing Yi Weeping Force. Next, from Pepperdine, Internal Style and Weapon Traces. Next, from Bruno, Xing Yi Da Dao. Next, from Bruno, Xing Yi Huang Bo Nian's Book and Saber. Next, uh, Faroha Farohi, Xiu Dao Finger Postures. Next, Dragon Phoenix Gong Fu, Qi Gan and Internal Harmony. Next, Zhou Zeni Tai Qi Peng Jin and Qi Gan. Next, TB Merger Tattooing Effects on Meridians. Next, from Asaglyphi Bagua and Wooden Dummy. Next, from Asaglyphi Bagua Jiang Rongqiao vs. Cheng Style. Finally, Anonymous Xiu Dao Stress and Fear Management. So, without any Further ado, let's get started. Federico Pogoli asked a question related to Xiu Dao. Quote, Could you tell which are the internal signs that the embryo is starting to form? End translation. <clears throat> Hello, Federico. This is a very advanced question. Sheng Tai O. Elixir embryo is the term used to describe a Xiu Dao result in a tangible way. However, embryo is a term used to describe a stage of a practice. Sheng Tai is a stage. There are many energetic experiences that can occur in it. Since you are asking about the internal signs of this step, let me mention them briefly here. First of all, you should know that to reach that step, there are some energetic experiences that may occur when you are in a deep meditative state, such as hearing sounds, seeing some lights, and so on. Sheng Tai is a stage after Wu Qi Chao Yuan or Five Energy Toward Origin. I have a video titled Three Flowers and Five Energy in Xiu Dao 7, in which I have explained Wu Qi Chao Yuan. Link is in the description. Sheng Tai or Elixir Embryo will follow that stage. Secondly, people who reach this level should have some energetic functions. I'm using the word function here since Sheng Tai is the stage in which a practitioner can manage the energy and cultivate the function of the energy. A detailed explanation is beyond the scope of a Q&A video and the lack of a detailed explanation may even end up misleading people's Xiu Dao practice. So, I'd like to explain it in the future. For now, I hope you will focus on Wu Qi Chao Yuan, and soon you will achieve the elixir embryo. Hope that 
answers your question, Federico. Let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> Federico Gordon asks about the weeping falls in Xing Yi practice. Quote, if I remember well, you mentioned that the weeping falls might be slower to deploy in comparison to other forces in Xing Yi. Would there be circumstances where weeping falls nevertheless be favored in a martial confrontation despite speed being a crucial factor? End quote. Thank you, Frederick. The weeping force is comparatively slower both in terms of making progress in practice as well as the speed of execution in self-defense situations. The reason is that the weeping force has a waving energy in it and takes a longer time to generate and transmit the waving energy in self-defense situations compared to the punching or penetrating force, since they are a much more straightforward type of force in terms of its power generation mechanisms. That's why I said that the weeping force is slower to deploy in comparison to other forces in Xing Yi. However, sometimes weeping force works better in a combat situation. For example, when the body moves in a direction opposite to your power, weeping force can be a better option. Furthermore, even though speed is always a key factor in combat, sometimes weeping force may be a better solution. For example, when someone grabs your hand and you need to free yourself from the grip, a weeping force can be worked very well. There is no silver bullet. So, depending on the situation, one force may work better than the others, including the weeping force. Also, it is worth noting that weeping force, when applied well, can have a penetrative effect depending on how the practitioner applies it. So, at an advanced level, different types of forces can have similar effects. Frederick, I hope I have answered your question. Thank you for asking. Let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> Pepper Dan asks two questions which I'd like to answer one by one. His first question is about the Qi Gan practice. Quote, How do you cultivate the feeling for which move and even which style to use if you are fighting. For example, double palm change followed by bong quan. Does it just come naturally or is it done consciously? Thank you for this question. By the way, this question refers to my three most recent videos in which I have explained a three-stage energy practice method for qi gan or energy sensation practice in martial art training. In those videos, I have mentioned that this is a training method used to train our body and mind to develop its martial ability through energy sensation training. It is a deliberate approach for practice purposes, but the application of qi gan in application or self-defense situations should be subconscious in nature. You should not have to think about it. In a self-defense situation, most of the time, techniques should be executed subconsciously as there is no time for pre-planned execution. So, the training method should not be confused with the fighting method. They may look the same, but the execution is indeed different. So, to answer your question, Bong Quan or Double Palm Change are terms used in training, but when it comes to applying techniques or martial skills resulting from the practice of these two movements, they should be executed subconsciously. Here's a second question. Quote, 
Which weapon should one decide to train if practicing a style with many weapons choices? Would it be what one find to be the most to them? End quote. It is a very good question. We have to know that there are two major purposes of weapon training. First, weapon training is an auxiliary training method for bare hand practice. Second, weapon training is only for using weapons for its martial effect. For the first objective, yes, there are many weapons in a style. So, to choose the right weapon, you have to know the purpose of your weapon training. For example, if you want to train whole body power, spear is always the best choice. If you want to train the flexibility of the body and the arm, the Tai Chi sword is the best option. If you want to train the chopping motion and the power of your arms and the hands, then Xing Yi's saber is the best. Different weapons provide different benefits, so it all depends on your objective. For the second training purpose, where one masters the weapon with the intention of using the weapon, you can choose whatever you like to practice instead of following the training order for the first objective. In the Chinese martial art community, spear training is always considered the most important in terms of fighting ability. So, personally, I did choose a spear to practice if I wanted to only practice the weapon for mastering the weapon's fighting skill. Pepperdan, thank you for asking two good questions and I hope I have answered them. Let's move on to the next one. Bruno asked two questions related to Xing Yi weapon training, which I will answer one by one. His first question, quote, Can you share the same information about the relation between Xing Yi and the Da Dao, the two-handed broadsword used in the Boxer Rebellion and World War II? End quote. Hello Bruno. Since you asked me a very general question, I can only give you a very general answer. The Da Dao, two-handed broadsword used in World War II, as shown in this photo, was a common weapon during that time. Some martial artists of Xing Yi schools trained Chinese military soldiers to use it in battle. This type of saber was a common design back then and is still practiced in many styles including Xing Yi. As for the Boxer Rebellion, it depends on which region. In the Tianjin area, since Li Sun Yi got involved in that event, he used a different type of saber. The handle was much longer than the common saber. His saber was called Shuang Shou Dai or Two Hand Pulling. I talk about this saber in a prior video. Back in Li Sun Yi's time, there was no standard design for the Xing Yi saber. So, the question becomes, what was the original Xing Yi saber design? I will answer this in Bruno's next question. Bruno's second question, quote, in Huang Bo Nian's Xing Yi Feast and Weapon Instruction, the broader sword to practice Xing Yi is the Western type of a broader sword. The question is, any type of broader sword could be used to practice Xing Yi Dao. End quote. This is the history related question. The name of this book is Xing Yi Quan Xie Jiao Fan. Instruction of Xing Yi and the Weapon. Actually, this book was written by Huang Bennian with illustrations featuring Jiang Rongqiao. Huang Bennian was a disciple of Li Sun Yi. Li Sun Yi was one of the third generation of the Xing Yi practitioners and the second generation of Xing Yi disciples. Jiang Rongqiao, 
The same generation as Huang Bonian practiced Xing Yi and Ba Gua with Zhang Zhaodong, a Kung Fu brother of Li Cunyi. All of them practiced and taught in Tianjin. A saber photo in the book made many people think that Huang Bonian was using a Western weapon based on Jiang Rongqiao's illustrated demonstration. Actually, that was only a fancy handle design. The actual weapon shape, without considering the fancy handle, is indeed very close to the original Xing Yi weapon that was used by Li Luoneng, the Xing Yi founder. Now, let me introduce this historical information. Li Luoneng, the founder of Xing Yi with a G, studied Xing Yi without a G in Shanxi with the Dai family who practiced Xing Yi without a G. But back then, the popular broader sword was the Liu Ye Dao O Willow Leaf Sword. Li Luoneng practiced Liu Ye Dao instead of the popular Da Dao O Broad Sword. A few decades ago, people in Li Luoneng's tomb found two sabers and they were Liu Ye Dao. I saw the photo of that sword shared by Li Luoneng's descendants. So, the photo in Huang Bonian's book actually was the original design of the Xing Yi sword used by Li Luoneng, but with a fancy design in the handle area. Since Li Luoneng did not leave behind any detailed Xing Yi saber practice, and Li Cunyi's saber practice was so popular that most Xing Yi schools followed Li Cunyi's practice. With time, the Da Dao O broad sword became a popular Xing Yi weapon, even though it was not the original Li Cunyi saber in terms of design. By the way, in Huang Bonian's book, there was even a bayonet practice based on Xing Yi training. During the Second World War, Many martial artists con contributed their knowledge to help the Chinese military perform better, and that is part of the evidence. Bruno, I hope I have answered both of your questions. Let's move on to the next one. Faroka Farohi asks what finger posters are called in Taoism. Thank you, Faroha. Finger posture called Shou Yin or Finger Stamp. Shou Yin has been used in Taoist practice for thousands of years. It is used to create an energetic impact by maintaining a certain finger posture. Check out the practice time section in my video titled Xiu Dao uh, Concept 11 An Shen Zu Qiao in which I have introduced a Shou Yin in practice in order to calm down the mind. Back when I was a teenager, I studied Shou Yin practice with Shi Feng Zhi in Tianjin. She was the major Shou Yin teacher back then in China. So, in both the religious and the practical Taoist system, Shou Yin has been used but for different purposes. Again, to answer your question, the name of that practice in Taoism is Shou Yin. Hope that answers your question. Let's move on to the next one. Dragon Phoenix Kung Fu asks, quote, Are there three stages related to the three internal harmonies? End quote. Thank you, Dragon Phoenix Kung Fu. As mentioned in an earlier answer, the three stages refer to the method I created to introduce energy sensation practice or qi gan in martial art training. These three stages are yi xing yin qi or use the body to attract the qi. Second, yi qi dai xing or use the qi to lead the body and lian shen he qi or train the mind and integrate the qi. Check out the three videos 
before this one for a detailed introduction to the three stages. Links are in the description. The question also mentions the three internal harmonies, which I have explained in a prior video titled Liu He Internal Style Concept 1. Link is in the description. In the video on Liu He, I have introduced the three internal harmonies and the three external harmonies. The three internal harmonies are mind coordinates with the intention, intention coordinates with energy, and energy coordinates with the force. Now, let me answer the question about the relationship between the three qi gan stages and the three internal harmonies. Any practice at the energetic level may have a direct and indirect relationships. Broadly speaking, without the three internal harmonies, qi gan would not happen. However, three internal harmonies or nei san he is just a collective term without any specific practice. So, what I provided in the three videos on qi gan stages was the specific practice to develop qi gan. They are totally different things indeed. A term does not have any value without a specific practical solution. So, strictly speaking, there is no relationship between qi gan and the three internal harmonies. Dragon finished Kung Fu. I hope I have answered your question. Let's move on to the next one. Josani asks, quote, Is there a relationship between this energy sensation you talk about and the feeling of Peng Jin throughout the body that we try to maintain during Chen Tai Chi? End quote. Thank you, Zhou Zhen. Peng Jin is a type of Tai Chi energy, and any Tai Chi energy should be executed by some specific movements. As I said in the Three Qi Gan video, a form is the carrier of energy, and energy or form alone will not work in martial art practice. So, Peng Jin or Peng energy is the type of energy which is also achieved by Peng Jin related Tai Chi movements. Peng Jin movements are a very good way to train the three stage energy practice method, but Peng Jin itself has nothing to do with the three stage energy practice. Thank you, Josan. Hope that answers your question. Let's move on to the next one. TB Merger asked if tattooing affects energy circulation in meridians and in the body as a whole. I do not take this question as the medical related one. I will answer this briefly based on my own understanding of tattooing. First of all, meridians are inside the body and connect different organs, body parts, and energy together. Well, we have no idea of how the meridian system was discovered. We know it works in guiding TCM practice, especially acupuncture. A tattoo only adds some color to the skin through needling, but it does not go too deep. Our energy in the body is sourced mainly from the internal organs not from the skin, even though there is a relationship between skin and the internal organs, according to TCM. Therefore, I do not think tattooing has any major effect on energy circulation. So, if someone has or wants to get a tattoo, that shouldn't be any concerns with regard to energy practice or energy circulation. To be clear, this is just my opinion based on my cursory knowledge of tattooing. This is neither medical advice nor an endorsement nor a criticism of tattooing. Thank you, TB Merger. Hope that answers the question. Let's move on to the next one. 
as a Gallup asked two questions which I would answer one by one. Here's the first question, quote, a Bagua wooden dummy forms a part of any family or system's traditional training. End quote. Short answer, no. Wooden dummy, if I understand correctly, you are talking about the one used in Wen Chang practice. In Bagua, traditionally, there has been no such training device used. Maybe recently, some people started using it in their Bagua training. I do not think it is a bad idea, but it is not part of the traditional training. Times are different now, and adopting wooden dummies into Bagua training can be a good idea. Well, I don't use it in my own Bagua practice. I'm also not opposed to it. What's important is to not compromise on your traditional Bagua practice method for the sake of adapting it to wooden dummy practice. As long as you ensure that practicing with a wooden dummy can be good. Here's the second question, quote, Why does Jiang Rong Qiao's Bagua Zhang form seemingly have less obvious circular movements than Cheng or Gao style? I asked because a master of the high skills urged me not to train this as it doesn't have a greater range of circular motions. And there were other systems that would be better to invest my time into." End quote. This claim about Jiang Rong Qiao's Bagua is not true. To be frank with you, Jiang Rong Qiao was one of the best martial artists of the last century. Yes, his Bagua is a simplified form of Zhang Zhao Dong's style, but if we talk about circular movements, as the stated standard in judging a style. Actually, Jiang Rong Qiao's form has the same approach, but the circular motion is just not that obvious. As you noted in the first part of your question, in any Bagua style, there are always many circular movements in different formats and fashions. Jiang's circular movement is just very subtle if practiced correctly. Again, it is not the stealth problem, but the practitioner's or the observer's problem. Of course, if the martial art teacher you mentioned suggested you to practice a style such as Cheng style or Gao Yi Sheng style, that is totally fine and I recommend them myself. But Advising against Jiang Rong Qiao's Bagua is something I do not agree with. Jiang Rong Qiao's Bagua is just as good as other styles of Bagua, in my experience. I hope I have answered the question. Let's move on to the final question for today. Anonymous asked, quote, If in daily life, seeing something disturbing happens suddenly and makes me stressed, anxious, then which Xiu Dao technique or principle can I use to overcome stress? I mean, how can I use Xiu Dao for stress fear management to be able to continue the activity that I was doing, for example, working, driving, cooking, walking, or whatever activity of daily life? when a surprising, frightening event happened." End quote. Thank you, Anonymous. This is a very good question indeed. I have to say that there is no specific technique in any style that can be used to handle stress and anxiety in our daily lives. But at the same time, any practice no matter Xiu Dao, Yoga, Tai Chi, Running, or whatever, can provide great help in handling disturbances that occur suddenly in our daily lives. Being able to identify the cause of the stress and the anxiety and finding the right solution is one of the approaches. If the event is so dramatic that the person cannot relax one 
practicing Xiu Dao, Tai Chi or whatever. The better solution is to first solve the problem and then practice. For that specific case, practice is not the only solution to make ourselves feel better, but solving the problem is a much better way to solve the root of the cause. If the problem is too big to solve quickly, I suggest giving it time. Time heals everything. I always tell my students that any practice, including Xiu Dao and martial art, can only make good things better, but cannot make bad things worse. This can be another attitude toward Xiu Dao practice. Again, this is a very good question. It reminds me as well that in life, we have to be able to face many challenges. Sometimes those challenges are beyond our capacity. Nevertheless, we can still improve ourselves and make those challenges less challenging. Hope that answers your question, Anonymous. Thank you once again. Those were all the questions for today. Thank you all for asking and hope you found my answers informative. As always, please feel free to ask more questions. Your questions help me to provide better content and clarify important issues in the community, so keep them coming. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.